Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton rakaman khas Agenda Awani and I'm here on the sideline of the 11th World Islamic Economic Forum. Finally back here in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur at KLCC Convention Centre and I would like to thank WEF for giving me the opportunity to interview great, great speakers here. <laughs> and now I'm sitting beside one, His Excellency Dr. Surin Pitsuan, former Secretary General of ASEAN. Thank you so much, Doctor, for making time. Thank you, you know, very much very, very for inviting busy. me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, ASEAN is one of the key uh, words that keeps propping up yeah. on, on the sideline or inside the discussions yes. of uh, this particular 11th WIEF. Yes. I would like to see your take on it because for the longest time you've been championing ASEAN getting together and better. But suddenly with budget airlines, new innovation, the social mobility mm -hmm. has added a new drive and mm. impetus. Mm. So if you can give just a brief snapshot of where we had come from, for the longest time, it was only a meeting of diplomats, politicians, yeah. country leaders, yeah. and some people saying, we progress of in a few years what we may have managed to do in 40 years. <laughs> so how would you well, look think, at it? I think ASEAN has been in existence for the past 48 years, mm -hmm. almost 50 years. We are now preparing to celebrate yes. our half century uh, mark. And one of the persons who was the, a guiding light of the idea of ASEAN was none other than Tun Abdul Razak, the second Prime Minister of Malaysia and uh, the father of the mm -hmm. current yes. Prime Minister of Malaysia. The idea then was to come together as medium and small size countries. All of them are developing. Almost all of them were just emerging out of colonialism. Mm -hmm. They would like to have a platform for themselves, uh, appropriate to their size here in Southeast Asia with a lot of diversity among us. So at that time, the idea and the vision was rather, rather humble and uh, less less forward-looking but just to be collegial among ourselves of course things have changed with the opening up of China with the growth of India and with like you said the globalization forces ASEAN had to measure up mm -hmm. in order to take advantage or at least or even just to to remain relevant yes. in the changing global global scene so they decided to, rather than just the association, they wanted to go into the community. Mm -hmm. and Malaysia is in a position to make that announcement at the end of this year. I think now more awareness about ASEAN uh, and more expectation about ASEAN and definitely more challenges yes. for ASEAN mm -hmm. because um, as a regional organization, second to only the EU, uh, there has been a lot of expectation put place on ASEAN. Uh, we, are, we have been growing mm -hmm. uh, consistently uh, when the world was uh, in decline and uh, we have recorded uh, at least four, five, six percent a year yes. on the average. And uh, combined GDP is 2.6 trillion. Yes. If we were a country, mm -hmm. 10 of mm -hmm. us, one mm -hmm. country, yes or United ASEAN, uh, it would be number seven. Okay. And uh, trade with the world is about 2.7 trillion US mm -hmm. dollars. Unfortunately, only 25% of oh, the 2.7 uh, trillion is among ourselves. So we have a lot to work on. Yes. Uh, the landscape has changed. The emergence of TPP, yes. France-Pacific uh, Partnership, Malaysia belongs, uh, Vietnam belongs, Brunei yes. and Singapore belong, certainly is going to, uh, I hope, is going to encourage us in ASEAN to work harder in our integration effort, in our community building, enhancing our competitiveness with the world mm -hmm. and uh, harnessing the potential and the opportunities opening up with China, with India, with uh, East Asia, and uh, with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I think we are in a very, very uh, fortunate position, but challenges are there, and we should not be complacent. Yes. And our youth will have to come into the mm -hmm. picture, and uh, 
our private sector and our civil society, our academics, our media yes. will have to come into the picture. I think overall the structure has been built. Yes. The younger and the newer generation will have to move in. Uh, you may have to rearrange the furniture. Yes. Uh, but the structure has been done and it's time for the larger portion of the ASEAN population to come in and mm -hmm. take advantage of this architecture that we have built. We have also built something yes. that is very unique for ASEAN, mm -hmm. and that is the dialogue partnership. Okay. So every major powers, mm -hmm. trade or otherwise, in the world, uh, China, Japan, Korea, uh, US, Canada, the EU, Japan, uh, they are all, even the UN system, are all our partners okay. in development, partners in mm -hmm. cooperation on many, many issues together. So uh, ASEAN is a darling of, of many. Yes. Uh, the words that they used to describe ASEAN was the fulcrum of emerging architecture in East Asia. Okay. And that is very important mm -hmm. because East Asia, Asia, Pacific uh, is a very important region. Yes. Uh, 21st century is supposed to be our century. Yep. And uh, the focal point is here mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the Western Pacific which is us, Southeast Asia, East Asia. So it is important. Uh, there are a lot of potential. The challenges, the limitations are there, the obstacles are there. But the younger generation okay. will have to come in and help build this, mm -hmm. this house. But you know what they say about mm. the Generation Y? We ask them to change the move around the furniture. They might want to remodel some parts of the house. So it's, will, really, it's yeah. really up to them. Yep. I think the older generation have come this far mm -hmm. uh, with their own limited uh, resources and relevant to their time mm -hmm. and time is changing very quickly, very fast. Mm -hmm. The new generation may have better ideas, yes. but I think the foundation has been laid okay. and uh, I think uh, there, there are a lot of uh, resources yep. and potential. I think the younger generation will have their contributions to make. Cool. Uh, building ASEAN, even with the launching of it at the end of this month mm -hmm. in uh, Kuala Lumpur, mm -hmm. under the leadership of, uh, of Malaysia, of uh, Najib, uh, it's not going to be a finished yep. product. It will always be a work in progress, yes. much like the EU. Yep. There will be embellishment to be made, there will be uh, adjustment to be made, uh, there will be maybe even changing of the direction and courses. Okay. But the foundation is here. Yeah. That's important. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for still watching a very specially recorded session of Agenda Awani on the sideline of the 11th WIEF. And I've been chasing His Excellency Dr. Surin Pitswell for many, many months. Now he's here beside me. I'm so glad. Thanks to WIEF. And I want to continue yes. talking about ASEAN. In, if we look at leadership, it's also about managing change. Yes. But to manage change across the 10 different countries in ASEAN is not easy. Mm -hmm. Different dynamics, different uh, elements of diversity, but change we must. And a lot of regions around the world, we've seen this. We've seen in Arab Spring whether when it happened, it had to happen like that mm -hmm. because counter-opposing forces just couldn't gel together. But for ASEAN, Malaysia has even have a movement of moderates, for example. So where do you stand? Because some people tend to think that it's people in power that will change the last. Young people across the board in ASEAN wants to be together and they're already meeting on WhatsApp group or other social media mechanism. But people with power, would they accept and embrace change fast enough for us to move to where we need to be? Well, change is always difficult. But those who are wise enough to see the trend and to feel the pulse of change will have to adopt and adapt uh, to the trend. And I think it's up to the younger generation. You need the older generation, you need the institutions, you need the norms that yes. has, have existed for generations to keep us together. 
But I think Southeast Asia is fortunate in a way that we have been a rather moderate region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Extremism exists, but not to the point where it could disrupt yes. growth or disrupt our, our harmony, our social peace. So I think it's up to the population of each country, it's up to the new generation how to make use of the space that has been opened up, the technology that has been yes. opened up. And I think the older generation will have to listen very, very carefully and feel the, the pressure. Um, and things change. Sometimes they change without us recognizing or perceiving it. I came from southern Thailand. My background was in a Pondok. Okay. I was born as a grandson, as son of Pondok teachers. Okay. I grew up there, I studied there. But I stepped out of the wall of the Pondok. Yes. And thinking that the world must be bigger than just the wall of the Pondok. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so I came out mm -hmm. and uh, tried to improve myself, enhance my own uh, knowledge of the world and offer myself to the public, uh, to the Thai public, later on to the ASEAN public yes. and now to the international public. Uh, things change and I think if the younger generation would uh, focus on improving themselves, on seizing the opportunities that open, uh, making use of the space that has been made available, they can make a lot of contribution in the change. Maybe gradual, mm -hmm. but change will come. I agree. Mm -hmm. It cannot be abrupt. Yeah. I think the cost of abrupt change is just too high. Arab Spring is not for us. I don't think we need to wait for the Arab mm -hmm. Spring or ASEAN mm -hmm. Spring mm -hmm. or whatever yes. to happen. Mm -hmm. I think uh, things can make adjustment along the way and we are making adjustment along the way. For all the things that happen in the region, I think you know, we try to accommodate the demand of the time yes. but also trying to uh, negotiate with the institutions, with the framework, with the cultures and the norms that have existed that have helped us through the generations. Yes. So I would rather <laughs> see a, a gradual transformation. Yes. Yes. Uh, there is an ideological position for people like me, yes. a Birkin <laughs> conservative, okay. who, are, who would argue that within the frame of the institution and yes. the cultures and the mm -hmm. norms, mm -hmm. there is a room for liberty. Yes. There is room for freedom. Mm -hmm. for freedom. There is room for uh, uh, innovation. And, and I think that's, that's suitable for a society, many societies in ASEAN, Malaysia included. Yes. Uh, I think it's suitable for Muslim society, mm -hmm. for sure, that you don't uh, just uh, reject and deny mm -hmm. uh, the cultures and the values and the norms and the tradition abruptly. You have to work within the framework and try to change from yeah. within. And things have happened. I mean, the fact that Malaysia has traveled so far mm -hmm in the past 30, 40 years up to this point, uh, I think um, a high income country now, uh, leaving many of the ASEAN fellow countries behind, over 10,000 10, US dollars per head per capita. Now one would hope that the equity, the distribution, mm -hmm. redistribution mm -hmm. would be more mm -hmm. uh, fairly uh, distributed, but uh, you know, you have built uh, a new and a modern state, modern society. It's only because of the gradual so how do strategy we, and approach that your leadership have adopted. So how do we do that together? Because we don't want Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand well, to be ahead of the rest too well, far. No, no, countries will have to find their own pace, mm -hmm. their own comfortable speed. Uh, nobody can Im impose, but we can only show the way. I think countries in the Mekong River, uh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam and Myanmar are looking up to the way in which we ourselves have developed and evolved. Some of the things they want to avoid, mm -hmm. some of the things they want to adopt, fine. But uh, they are learning very fast to mm -hmm. speak the language of the market, meaning if you want to develop, if you want to industrialize, if you want more investment, you have to change. Mm -hmm. You have to accommodate the demand and the expectation of those people coming from outside. So laws, regulations, um, institutions, 
ways in which we manage things, transparency, will have to be brought up to a certain level, to the comfort level that they would expect, so they come. Thailand went through the same thing, mm -hmm. Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, and, uh, and Singapore have gone through the same thing. As you said earlier, we began with a rather uh, a collection of backward, yes. uh, mm -hmm. underdeveloped countries, mm -hmm. uh, but we have traveled very, very far gradually. Gradually means 48 years, 50 years. But we have done very well yeah. compared to other okay. regions around okay. the world. But sometimes we need fast solution for yeah. things mm -hmm. like the haze. We can't breathe and it's there for days and weeks. What used to be only passing is now almost semi-permanently up there and during the most important season of... But one of the things that I said to be blocking fast solution is that this is a sensitive matter. It's I diplomatic I agree relations. with you on certain issues. You need quick solution and that would depend on those countries relevant and involved mm -hmm. will have to come together and try to find a quick solution. This year has been worse, worse than many years. Mm -hmm. I think 1997 yes. was yeah, the okay. high point. Mm -hmm. This time, high point in a negative way. Yes. This time is probably worse. All the way up to mm -hmm. southern Thailand. My mm -hmm. mother suffered, 88 years old. So suffered would, from wouldn't this be the best platform for ASEAN? Yes, yes. I have helped uh, built up that mm -hmm. circle of uh, ministers uh, specially relevant and specially tasked to look into Hayes issue. In fact, the forest fire, the smoke from forest fire here in this part of the world, in the region, uh, was an issue that ASEAN was discussing a long time ago mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. relation to the issue or to the principle of non-interference. Okay. Uh, that from now on, uh, there are issues that are trans-boundaries okay. that we need to work, we need to discuss. Mm -hmm. Pandemic, yes. uh, drugs, uh, international mm -hmm. crimes, and money laundering, and environment. Mm -hmm. You know, environment is destroyed across the borderline doesn't mean that the impact yes. will be only on the other side. Yeah. It will impact the entire region. Yes, yes. Uh, issues that ASEAN need to improve upon, there are okay. many. Cool. And I'm not the one who would say that ASEAN has been perfect. Yes. Uh, there are many things, mm -hmm. and I think the leaders and the ministers know that cool. uh, I was in a hurry yes. on many, many issues. <laughs> this is one. Yes. We, we totally agree on that, yeah. uh, Doctor. We have yeah. to go for the last break, but once yeah. we are back, I just would like to get your wisdom on another perplexing issue. This time, the haze, I think, relatively is simpler because we can settle it among ASEAN members. But the South China Sea, reclamation done of a very sensitive coral-based ecosystem, for example, the next generation might not even be able to see species of uh, sea creatures, marine life, and benefit from it if we don't settle our issues now. And this involves powerful nations of the world. Let's talk about that after this break. You are still watching a very special interview with His Excellency Dr. Surin Pitsuwan. Thanks to WIEF. Doctor, I want to go straight to the point. We only have a few minutes left. We've talked about the haze, but that's intra ASEAN. But South China Sea, this is a shared ecosystem that's very important and strategically, not just to the neighboring countries, but also to the most powerful nation on earth. What, 50, 60% of uh, sea cargo passes by this? trade routes and everything else. So we've been hearing reports that more than 1,000 hectares of reclamation has happened and we want to have our nice sea not to be contaminated for the future. How could ASEAN really, really put its attention down and solve this once and for all? First, ASEAN must be united in our approach. I think uh, what ASEAN can do is to provide a platform and we have been doing that and uh, made some progress, but I think we must be unified in discussing these issues first, of course, with China and then with the rest mm -hmm. who, who have the, um, the, who have been dependent on the access through 
this water, about 4 million square mm. kilometers. Uh, I think in the final analysis, each claimant will have to discuss on the issue bilaterally. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is to agree on a set of code of conduct okay. that would avoid misunderstanding, miscalculation, <laughs> and um, tension mm -hmm. uh, on the ground. I think that's doable. Okay. I think uh, you know bigger countries will also have to take into account the feelings and the sentiments of smaller countries mm -hmm. in the region. Uh, major powers are testing, you yes. know, their uh, uh, flexing their the muscles, uh, muscles, <laughs> uh, flexing their muscles, uh, which is not good yes. for the region. But uh, I think the the region will have to come up with a principle, mm -hmm. principle of norms, principle of peace, principle of cooperation. Uh, and that's, I think, what ASEAN has been trying to do. Uh, lately, I have seen some hesitation on some members of ASEAN that not wanting to get involved uh, too directly because they are not claimants. Yes, yes. Uh, I think that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I think ASEAN as a regional organization, as the first host of the issue, uh, in 2002 they agreed on yep. the mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. declaration yes. on the code of conduct that they would agree mm -hmm. on that code shortly in the future, taking them 10 years yes. to get to the uh, declaration or the agreement on what's next, yep. how to interpret, how to use that, that declaration. Now they are working on the code of conduct. I think it's inevitable. It's our responsibility, and it's the expectation and responsibility of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. East Asia has become more important to the world now than 10 years, than 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Anything happened. If we derail in our economic growth, if we have tension and confrontation and violence, we will have tremendous impact on the rest of the world. So it's our responsibility, together, common, to make sure that we can manage this, this problem and I would appeal to all parties that keep in mind the, the common interests, not only of us in the region, but of the rest of the world, and that we should keep this space manageable, uh, in peace, in harmony if you want, uh, but we can't avoid working together to keep peace. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in the long run, in the long run, we have it in our common future to um, to be able to bring solutions to the problem we don't want any changes we don't want any uh, uh, initiatives that would undermine the environment and the atmosphere of uh, of uh, creating an enabling environment for work together for cooperation for exchange uh, I think it's still within reach, and I think uh, the ASEAN countries, ASEAN leaders will have to work very hard with China, with other countries in the region mm -hmm. who would have direct interest in uh, managing the peace and uh, the, the productivity of the area, the potentiality of the area, the resources of the area. It's, it's common to all of us to see them best manage for us and for the future. What will give you optimism on that count? Because I think we in East Asia uh, have been able to achieve many things in the past. We have gone through a lot of uh, uh, violence in mm -hmm. many parts of the mm -hmm. world and we have come around. And I think the last uh, signal that gave me uh, optimism is uh, the getting together of the three countries in Northeast Asia, Japan, mm -hmm. Korea, and China. Mm -hmm. uh, because they see common interests. Okay. They see that uh, they have common responsibility to manage the region together. And uh, they will avoid uh, open conflict. Uh, there will be occasions of misunderstanding and tension, but I think in the end they will manage to restrain themselves. Okay and uh, aiming at the larger interests of the larger region of the global community. ASEAN, as I said, East Asia, Asia Pacific have become more important to the rest of the world mm -hmm. than previously. 
it is incumbent upon us. It is uh, our responsibility to make sure that we continue to be, to provide a leadership, an engine of growth to the rest of the world. As usual, great wisdom from a great leader because we have to build resilience through equitable growth and you have answered it all across ASEAN. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Surin Pitsuan. Thank you. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to WIEF for making this possible and I'll catch you in another episode of Agenda Awani very, very soon. This has been a special recording session on the sideline of the 11th WIEF at KLCC Convention Centre. Goodbye.